All right, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Chris Nash. I am the chair of the pro bono committee for the 13th Judicial Circuit. And I'm so happy all of you uh, made time to be here tonight. Um, this, this, uh, for the legal profession, this is definitely my favorite night of the year. It's the night where the, uh, the judges get to, to come out and show gratitude and thank and recognize uh, the real heroes of the legal profession. Uh, the attorneys who are willing to sacrifice their own time to bring justice to others. There's a, an illustration that I saw recently uh, that I'll sort of steal and uh, localize to Tampa. Uh, in Tampa, we have, with a 15% poverty rate, uh, about 180,000 indigent people. And um, if you were, there, there's, there's 50 Bay Area Legal Services uh, full-time attorneys. So by ratio, if you were to fill Amelie Arena, which seats 20,000, with indigent people, there would be five full-time attorneys to serve all of Amelie Arena. So uh, it's, it's just, just to visualize uh, the, the, the amount of, uh, of needs that are unmet. Now, Bay Area Legal Services, they make miracles happen every day with the resources they have, uh, but it's not enough. And the, re the heroes of the legal profession are the ones who are bridging the gap, bringing justice to people who can't afford it. And really, uh, they're not only uh, bringing great service to those people, but they're serving the entire uh, judicial system and our system of government, which de depends so vitally on the uh, continued public trust. So we're here to celebrate tonight um, all the attorneys who are willing to give pro bono service. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask uh, Chief, Ju uh, Chief Judge Ron Ficarota, I almost gave you a uh, promotion to Chief Justice. Uh, I'd like to <laughs> recognize the Chief Judge to come up and um, uh, make some introductions. I, I like to avoid Tallahassee whenever I can, so uh, I'm very, very happy and honored uh, to be right here tonight and be here with, with my, my brethren uh, of the bench here and with all of you to celebrate pro bono and to celebrate everything that you all do for all of us. Uh, as Chris said, my name is Ron Ficarote and I'm honored to serve as a chief judge. Let me take a moment to introduce my colleagues who are here with us. We're very honored to have with us from the United States a District Court for the Middle District, Judge William Castagna, from the Second District Court of Appeals, Judge Edward LaRose, Judge Susan Rothstein Yoakum, from the United States Bankruptcy Court, Judge Catherine McEwen, uh, my colleagues from the 13th Circuit in Hillsborough County, uh, Rex Barbas, Catherine Catlin, John Conrad, Catherine Esrig, Scott Farr, Jennifer Gabbard, Kim Hernandez Vance, uh, Daryl Manning, Ashley Moody, Judge Nash, who you've met, Melissa Polo, uh, Ralph Stoddard, Wesley Tibbles, Barbara Twine Thomas and Laura Ward. I think I've called all my judges, I hope. Uh, also, we have with us the president of the Hillsborough County Bar Association, uh, Kevin McLaughlin, the executive director of the Hillsborough County Bar Association, John Kynes, and representing our clerk of the circuit court, chief deputy clerk, Doug Bakke. On behalf of all the judges, uh, we think the most important people here are all of you, all of you that have taken the time to perform pro bono. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much. I mentioned tonight is um, one of my favorite nights of the year in the legal community. Now I'd like to um, recognize one of my favorite people in our legal community, Fentress Driscoll, um, who's going to uh, make a few remarks. Is Fentress here? She's not, she's not here yet. Um, <laughs> um, is um, I'll tell you what we, we'll we'll skip over that section and we'll and we'll come back to it. These uh, so that's an important part of the ceremony tonight. Um, we want to uh, hear from Fentress uh, about um, Blaze Gamba. All right. Next, uh, we'll hear from Nancy Lugo. Thank you. Hello, welcome to our esteemed members of the judiciary, distinguished guests award recipients, family, friends, and colleagues. My name is Nancy Lugo, and I'm the administrator for the Circuit Pro Bono Committee. I'm also an attorney with Bay Area Legal Services Volunteer Lawyers Program, so you will be seeing me after during the reception. Um, this ceremony and our reception to follow would not be taking place in this beautiful venue were it not for the support and the commitment and the generosity of our sponsors. 
We are thankful to them for their commitment to pro bono service and also for their sponsorship contributions. Our platinum sponsors are Carlton Fields PA, Foley and Lardner, LLP, and Zuckerman Spader, LLP. Our gold sponsors are Schutz and Bowen, LLP, Vaca Law Group, Sandy Weinberg, and Rosemary Armstrong. Please join me in thanking our sponsors for their support. Okay, well, the next uh, person doesn't need any introduction, the chair of our circuit pro bono committee, together with Judge Wesley Tibbles, the vice chair of our committee, and also the 2014 recipient of the Hillsborough County Bar Association's Jimmy Kind's Pro Bono Service Award. I'm also introducing Judge Ashley Moody, who is a member of the Florida Bar Standing Committee on Pro Bono, a former chair of our circuit pro bono committee, and the recipient of the Florida Chief Justice's 2015 Distinguished Judicial Service Award. Judges? All right, um, what we'd like to do now is recognize the uh, 2017 lapel pin uh, winners. Um, let me tell you just a little bit about um, why people are getting these lapel pins. Uh, for years now, the Florida Supreme Court, the Young Lawyers Division, and the Florida Pro Bono Coordinators Association have collaborated to recognize all attorneys who provide 20 or more hours of pro bono service in any given year. Now, all attorneys providing uh, more than 20 hours in a circuit are recognized. They're given a lapel pin and a letter from the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court thanking them and recognizing them for their efforts. But the attorneys who uh, provide 100 hours or more uh, of community of, of uh, pro bono service are provided a special letter. They're given a gold letter, which is a personalized letter from the Chief Justice um, thanking them and recognizing them for their efforts. Um, so if you'd refer to your program, it has the names of all of the lapel pin uh, recipients. Um, so first, I'd like to ask all uh, attorneys providing between 20 and 49 hours. If any of you are here, um, please stand up now and be recognized. a hard job. It took three of us to come up here and do this. I have the privilege of asking whoever has between 50 and 99 hours to please stand up so we may recognize you. And I have the pleasure of recognizing those folks who um, gave 100 or more hours of pro bono service uh, over the last year, and if you look in your, there's 61 people in our community that gave over 100 hours of pro bono service. Well, all you folks, if you're here, please stand up. <laughs> Nancy, just to let you know how, how uh, successful our circuit's been in um, in performing pro bono uh, service and recognizing those who have performed it. Um, Nancy Lugo told me a little bit ago, in 2010 we only had six uh, lapel pin uh, recipients. Um, so you, you, can, you can look and, I'm sorry? Yeah, that, oh, that's right, yeah, six, six gold letter and you can see how much that, that's grown uh, there in your program. So at this time, um, back to my introduction to one of my favorite people in our legal community. I think she was just trying to build a little bit of suspense so she could make a grander entrance. Uh, Fentress Driscoll. Thank you, Judge Nash, and apologize for running a few minutes late. What's funny is that I had this on my calendar for 530. I don't know how Nancy Lugo was so on top of everything. Uh, and so I was in my car practicing. Anyway, so <laughs> to proceed, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. These selected, though familiar lines from the Old Testament, and maybe some of you recognize it from the birds, 
I share with you not for their religious significance, but for the practical wisdom that they contain. These words, they help to comfort me even when my mind cannot wrap itself around seemingly random or tragic events that occur in this world. When my mind cannot answer a question comprised of four very simple words, why did this happen? Well, if we look at the author's words, and if those author's words are true, and we take that wisdom and we apply it to our own lives, then the question shifts from why. Why did this happen to how? How can I make the most of my season? And we're only here for a season. Blaze made the most of her season. I don't know why our colleague was taken from us so soon, but I know that a significant way in which Blaze was able to make an impact in this world was through pro bono service. She volunteered for Bay Area Legal Services on intake nights. She was number two in the state of Florida for election protection efforts organized by the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. She was being groomed to take over that entire operation in the state. Lawyers would come from all over uh, to Carlton Fields to be in our election protection headquarters, and that was because of Blaze. And in fact, my last memory of Blaze was volunteering with her alongside, alongside her on election night last November. She handled family law cases, including representing a mother of three who was attempting to divorce her husband who was incarcerated. She served as an attorney at Lightham for juveniles without parental representation. She also hand handled numerous proceedings for Alpha House, which is a local nonprofit that helps uh, homeless pregnant women and mothers in crisis. And Blaze did all of this without seeking recognition. Uh, just the opposite, she helped others to attain recognition that they may have been due. For several years, she helped to organize our firm's pro bono week. For the last three years, she actually led that entire operation herself, uh, which meant giving recognition to our over 400 attorneys in over 10 offices and all the work they did. I know that it had to be like herding cats for her. It just had to be. But it's not anything I ever heard or complained about once. Instead, it was something that was very important to Blaze. I think that Blaze would have felt very honored tonight that the committee held this reception in her honor. So this is not recognition that she would have sought herself. But on behalf of my firm, on behalf of everyone who knew and loved and loves Blaze, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for honoring her in this way tonight. And thank you for encouraging the rest of us to make the most of our seasons through continued pro bono work. Thank you. Thank you, Fentress, and um, to Blaze's family members uh, who are here tonight, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you for letting us dedicate this ceremony uh, to, to Blaze. It, it, it really has made the night special uh, in, in a way that it uh, couldn't have been otherwise. So thank you very much. Um, and now I'd like to ask Mike Hooker to come to the podium to uh, recognize the uh, first award recipient. Thank you, Judge. Uh, greetings from the Florida Bar Board of Governors. I'm Mike Hooker. I'm one of our circuit's uh, representatives on the Board of Governors, and I'm uh, happy to be here. It's indeed an honor. Federal prisons are literally full of drug offenders who might have received uh, shorter or lighter sentences if they have been convicted under current law. And to answer that injustice, the Clemency Project 2014 was created. I'm happy to say that our own Catherine uh, Yanis has been one of the keys to that project's uh, successes. For over two years, Catherine has answered the call of the uh, Justice Department for pro bono attorneys to represent uh, federal prisoners uh, who have been sentenced under older uh, law. Uh, she's done that in connection with the Clemency Project. These prisoners who are mostly drug offenders uh, have been represented by people like Catherine, and to do uh, to f come within that uh, project, they have to meet certain criteria. For instance, they have to have been convicted under uh, older law that uh, resulted in a harsher sentence than they would have received uh, today. They also have to have uh, a nonviolent uh, history, uh, for instance, not uh, being involved uh, previously with uh, uh, gangs or uh, organized crime. They also have to have had no significant uh, prior convictions. 
Since becoming involved in 2014, uh, Catherine has worked night and day, weekday, uh, weekends, uh, contributing literally hundreds of hours uh, to the clemency uh, project representing uh, inmates and hundreds more uh, helping uh, on the screening committee for that project and assisting and training other pro bono lawyers. She has uh, stated that she felt like this was really a once in a lifetime opportunity to be able to make a difference on a larger scale in people's lives. And make a difference, uh, she surely has. All told, Catherine and her firm, Kynes Markman Feldman, have submitted over or, or 110 petitions uh, in connection with the pro uh, clemency project. And that has resulted, as of late 2016, uh, in the granting of clemency to 30 of these prisoners. So 30 people are out of jail as a result of her and her firm's uh, efforts. Catherine also represents uh, clients on a pro bono basis for Crossroads for Florida Kids and the Stetson Innocence Pro Bono Project. She's a current uh, president of the Federal Bar Association of the Tampa Bay Chapter. She's a past president of uh, Hall, the Hillsborough Association for Women Lawyers. In 2016, the criminal law section of our association uh, awarded her its annual Bubba Herta uh, Award for uh, professionalism and pro bono service. So, on behalf of the Florida Bar Board of Governors, it's indeed my uh, distinct honor and uh, privilege to recognize now uh, as this year's recipient of the Florida Bar President's Pro Bono Service Award, Catherine Mannes. Unfortunately, Catherine Yanis was not able to attend tonight, but she is very sincerely thanks everyone for the recognition. Judge John uh, Conrad has been in uh, many ways a mentor to me, and I've had the privilege of working with him on the uh, pro bono river run. Uh, he's been the heart and soul of that committee from that event for the last three years, and he's uh, going to come to the podium now and tell us about it. All right, I was told I had two minutes, so like a good runner, here we go. <laughs> uh, we had another great event this year. I want to first thank everyone who served on the committee, uh, especially co-chair uh, Judge Velez Valkenberg. Uh, I also want to thank everyone at the Hillsborough County Bar Association for their hard work. They do a lot behind the scenes, and uh, they're uh, helping produce and organize this event. I also want to thank the runners. They're the individuals that participate in the race and actually secure pledges of pro bono hours uh, for their participation. So I want to thank this, uh, them for their uh, involvement. We had a great event. We had beautiful weather. This year we actually started the race with a pace car. We had a Tesla that led the runners out on the race route. Uh, along the river, we had a great view of the river. There was a great breeze. We had motivational music at the beginning of the race, along the race route. Think chariots of fire. Um, <laughs> And uh, uh, we had supportive volunteers cheering everyone on. And at the end of the route, we had a nice cold, wet towel waiting for you when you finished. And then you got the pig roast. So as they say, you just don't get any better than that. Um, we had 356 runners that participated this year. The oldest runner was 75 years old, so no excuses for anyone. And um, the whole purpose, though, of the race is to get runners to participate, pledge hours, and to get other people to support them by pledging pro bono hours to support uh, the poor and indigent in our community. Uh, last year, there were a total of 3,024 hours that were pledged in connection with the race. Uh, as a result of those pledges, there were actually 4,565 hours of pro bono hours and service that were performed uh, this past year. Uh, this year we had another 2,380 hours that were pledged, uh, so the race is very important in encouraging and producing those results. We give three special awards during the race in connection with it. We have a proven producer award, that's for the individual who pledges and actually performs the most hours. A few years ago it was renamed the Rosemary Award in honor of Rosemary Armstrong. This year's recipient, uh, recipient was Sissy Sevlin, who performed over 600 hours. We had two other awards, individual awards for pledging the most hours. We had two individuals uh, that received that. 
Paige uh, Greenlee and uh, Pamela uh, Papazoff, and then a team pledge award, and that was given this year. The team that pledged the most award was Bay Area Legal Services. We also had 18 proven producers, the people that pledged hours and either performed or exceeded those hours, 18 of them. So it was a great time for a great cause, and I hope to see all of you out there next year. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Jenna Hudson. I'm the pro bono manager with the Bay Area Volunteer Lawyers Program. And um, it is my sincere pleasure to introduce our next uh, award presenter. It is Judge Catherine um, Peake McEwen. Judge McEwen is the former chair of the Circuit Pro Bono Committee. She, um, in 2016, she was the first recipient of the Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court's Distinguished Federal Judicial Service Award. And Judge McEwen will be presenting the award for outstanding pro bono service by an organization. Thank you, Judge McEwen. Thank you, Jenna. I would like to invite two of my colleagues to stand with me because they actually participated in the program that led to the award that I'm about to bestow. Would I, could I have Judge Barbara Twine Thomas come up and Judge Daryl Manning, could you come up too and assist? Thank you. It is with much delight that I bestow this next award for the circuit's outstanding pro bono service by an organization, upon an organization of which I'm proud to be a member. And the reason for this award is just one of the reasons I am so proud. The George Edgecombe Bar Association is receiving this award on account of its long commitment to providing legal redress workshops for non-lawyers in our community. This year's workshop, which will be held uh, at the first week in May, is titled Learn Your Legal Rights Community Workshop. It will be the 13th year that GEBA has held such workshops, and in some of the years, the workshop was actually offered twice in those years. They're hosted in churches or community service centers located in predominantly minority neighborhoods throughout Hillsborough County. This year, we will be holding it at Hillsborough Community College on the Ebor campus, and we will be featuring one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions in addition to the traditional classroom lectures that we provide. Through its workshops, GEBA has endeavored to provide legal education and limited scope pro bono legal services to people who cannot afford those services. The attorney volunteers provide the community with targeted information on timely topics, relevant topics such as immigration, criminal law, employment, housing discrimination, tenant rights, wrongful termination, bankruptcy, foreclosure law, and family law. They also connect citizens with pro bono legal resources that are designed to assist them with their uh, disputes or issues. The attorney volunteers lead classes that last about 60 minutes on their legal topic with a portion of the time dedicated to taking questions from the audience so that they can try to help themselves. They also provide uh, complimentary breakfast and lunch, and during the lunch there is typically a panel uh, with a timely topic being discussed, and my colleagues to my right and my left, they participated in the panel last year which dealt with civics education. GEBA estimates that it has contributed 1,750 hours of time to its 15 total workshops from 2004 to 2016. Last year, GEBA had approximately 200 seats in those classrooms occupied in the classes throughout the day. Please welcome GEBA President Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy to accept both the award and our thanks for shepherding this valuable pro bono service. My name is Rachel Mazisk, and I am the chair of the awards subcommittee for the pro bono committee. I have the pleasure of introducing this year's recipient for outstanding pro bono service by a law firm. Parwani Law was founded by Rinki Parwani, a 19-year practitioner. In 2015, Ms. Parwani 
and her firm were approached by a young woman who had been brutally attacked by the father of her child. The attack had taken place in the front of the young boy and he was severely affected. Although the man was imprisoned, she could not find anyone to take her case to terminate the man's parental rights until she met the Parwani Law Firm. The Parwani Law Firm spent two years, hundreds of hours, and paid for all the expenses associated with the case. At the end of a multi-day trial, the firm was successful, and the woman and her son have been able to move on since. Additionally, the Parwani Law Firm donates its time to local pro bono organizations like Tampa Bay Bankruptcy Bar Association's Free Clinic, the Wills for Heroes Program, the Nativity Legal Ministry, and four times a year they donate an SUV full of teddy bears to the Dependency Court. It is my pleasure to introduce the Parwani Law Firm as this year's recipient of Outstanding Pro Bono Service by a Law Firm. And next up, we will have Michael Silver to, to award Outstanding Pro Bono Service by a Young Lawyer. Good afternoon. Um, it's my pleasure to present the Outstanding Pro Bono Service by a Young Lawyer. She's only young in age. Uh, Ella is an associate at our firm, Schutz & Bowen, and several of my partners are here. I can tell you, we look to her for advice. It's only in name only that she is an associate and we are a partner. Um, she's an incredible lawyer and one of uh, great maturity and also uh, a great gift of giving. Um, Ella has been the director of the Tampa J chapter of Project Help, which some of you may know. Uh, that is a pro bono weekly clinic done through the Metropolitan Ministries that provides services to indigent and homeless clients. Uh, this past March and again, uh, a year ago and again this past month, Ella led our firm's staffing of that project for a full month. Uh, I can tell you that is no small task, and she does it um, in addition to working incredibly hard on client matters. Uh, Ella also serves on our firm's pro bono committee and is the chair of our pro bono committee uh, in the Tampa office. To the best of my knowledge, Ella is the only associate in our entire firm of over 270 lawyers. That firm serves on a firm committee, and I think that shows what we think of her at Schutz & Bowen. Uh, throughout her nearly seven years of practice, Ella has handled approximately 25 uh, domestic violence cases, dozens of other pro bono matters. I've worked with her on a domestic uh, violence project through the Are You Safe organization, and she has helped with uh, various uh, human trafficking cases as well. In short, she's a tremendous lawyer, a tremendous uh, uh, giver of pro bono legal services, and uh, with her husband here, I'm obliged to say she married well, too, and gave, <laughs> gave birth to a beautiful daughter, too. So it's my pleasure to honor my friend, Ella Shenhoff. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rosemary Armstrong. I'm the executive director of Crossroads for Florida Kids and the immediate past chair of the Circuit Pro Bono Committee. And with me is Olin Shivers, a partner at Foley Lardner. And we have the distinct pleasure of presenting tonight two outstanding, outstanding pro bono service by a lawyer awards. Um, Olin, would you like to go first? I will defer to you, Rosemary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the first thing I need to tell you about Lisa Beggs is that she is a star at everything she does. Much, I might say, like Mark Wilson, our other award winner tonight. Lisa is an attorney with Zuckerman Spader, where she represents business leaders and corporations but it is the usage of her keen legal and social skills for the last four years representing two vulnerable teens in foster care that has won her award today for outstanding pro bono service. 
These two youths came into foster care traumatized by the abuse and neglect they experienced in their family homes. Lisa began representing one boy when he was barely 13 and in a residential mental health facility, and the other who has an intellectual disability when he was 14 and just back from a juvenile commitment program. In Lisa Beggs, these boys have a star advocate in their dependency, delinquency, and criminal proceedings, as well as in the community where she fights to ensure their needs are met. And as a star does, she shines a bright light on them that makes others see beyond their sometimes tough facade. But by far, the most important thing Lisa does is to meet with the boys wherever they are placed, locally or hours away, to provide them advice and counsel, and also to spend time shooting hoops, hoops playing cards, or computer games and just listening to them. When one of the boys became very anxious about the need for an overnight stay in the hospital, Lisa went home to have dinner with her family and tuck her kids into bed and then went back to spend the night in a chair by his bed. Lisa strives to make her kid clients feel just a little bit better about their current circumstances by showing them that they have a true advocate and one who will not abandon them. In 2016 alone, Lisa contributed 350 <coughs> pro bono hours representing these two teens. I present to you, Lisa Begg. I'm Olin Shivers, a Foley and Lardner, and it is my privilege to present my law partner and friend, Mark Wilson, to receive an outstanding pro bono service by a lawyer award today. For those of you who don't know Mark, he is a human dynamo of energy and emotion who is never shy about letting you know his thoughts on any given subject. <laughs> uh, some of you must know him. Uh, Mark applies his fearless attitude and passion for helping others who are less fortunate by generally donating his time to both community service and to pro bono. He provided over 175 hours of pro bono legal services in 2016 alone. He also contributes in unexpected ways by, uh, such as accepting hard to place guardianship cases that are well outside his area of expertise. Uh, Mark asked me to specifically recognize his legal assistant, Christy Rowell, for all of her efforts in support of his pro bono work, and to thank all the other legal assistants out there who are never formally recognized for their pro bono contribution. I've been told I only have two minutes to talk, so I don't have time to tell you all about Mark's individual accomplishments. I mentioned this to Mark ahead of time, and he reminded me that he speaks three times faster than I do, and, then, and he could have told you everything in two minutes with some time to spare. But for his individual commitment and efforts alone, uh, Mark is well deserving of this award. But what truly sets Mark apart is his willingness and ability to convince others to follow his lead and to make their own pro bono contributions. He has the often thankless job of heading up the pro bono efforts in our office. This requires him to constantly rally the other attorneys and urge them to increase their pro bono commitment and involvement. Mark can often be heard in our hallways encouraging a fellow lawyer to take one, meaning take one more pro bono case. <laughs> if you are attending the ceremony, then it's highly likely that you also share Mark's belief about pro bono service. But unfortunately, all of our legal colleagues do not feel the same way. Mark is doing all he can to change this and to get every attorney to participate in pro bono matters in one way or another. Mark's leadership efforts in this regard have been highly successful, which is another reason that he is well deserving of this award. Mark, please join me at the podium and accept your award.
Hello again. Did Harley arrive? Yes, good. It is truly an honor for me to introduce the recipient of our 2017 Jimmy Kynes Pro Bono Service Award, Harley Herman. Harley is a partner with the Plant City Law Firm of Herman & Herman and practices in the areas of elder law, estate planning, landlord-tenant law, and small business formations and disputes. Harley's pro bono work demonstrates all of the highest ideals that the Jimmy Kynes Award stands for. He began serving indigent clients as early as law school and upon practicing law served as a leader in several legal aid organizations. This laid the foundation for his lifelong mission to ensure the availability of legal services to the poor. Words really cannot do justice to the amount of work that Harley does uh, for the legal community, the indigent legal community. He devotes a significant amount of his own time and firm resources to representing those in need and also mentoring other attorneys who wish to serve indigent clients. In the 1990s, Harley accepted a request from the NAACP to attempt to save the African American Business District in Leesburg, Florida. He filed for injunctive relief against the city and a local hospital and continued to represent this group pro bono for close to a decade, exhausting all of his own resources until the case was finally settled in 1999. I learned um, of Harley Herman and his wonderful pro bono career um, through Bay Area Legal Services when we had a client that um, had a hearing coming up in just a couple of days away, an emergency hearing, and Harley stepped in at the very last minute and represented this client. He was still living in Orlando. It's before he had actually moved here, uh, relocated his practice here, and uh, he stepped in at the very last minute, represented this client, and then continued to assist her, not just for that one hearing, but took her case you know, to the, to the end. So I was just um, very very um, honored to work with him right from the beginning as soon as he came here to this area. And um, it, with Bay, Bay Area Volunteer Lawyers Program alone, he's done over 200 hours in just two years. And then there's so many other countless hours that he just doesn't even count because he, he doesn't do it for any kind of recognition. In fact, I had to strong arm him into allowing me to nominate him for this award because he does it for absolutely no recognition. Um, he works tirelessly and um, to protect and defend those who are not capable of doing so on their own. So I'm extremely grateful for everything that Harley has done on behalf of indigent clients, as well as the legal community, and it's my pleasure to present the award to Harley Herman. I'm going to be brief because this is a long program. I wanted to first both thank and congratulate all the people that we've recognized today. Uh, this is a very honorable and noble profession, but we're here only as long as the public allows us to be here. And to the extent that we are at part of the solution, to people gaining access to preserving their legal rights were allowed to practice. And unfortunately, when finances become a barrier, we often become part of the problem and not part of the solution. And that's why the efforts that everybody makes here is so important. I'd like to tell you that you know the work that I've done has been motivated solely by my own thoughts about what is best for the profession. But in reality, the first couple of years I began to practice, I met a 70-year-old attorney named Virgil Hawkins, who was just beginning to practice at that time because he gave up his right to get the education I received at the University of Florida to be the test case plaintiff to desegregate the university. And his only goal at the end of his life in being an attorney was to try to represent the people who could not afford attorneys. But his efforts prove that having the desire to do that alone 
is not enough. And sadly, I woke up about 30 years ago to read of his obituary, knowing that he had died in disgrace and dishonor because he couldn't do what he attempted to do by himself. And I knew I couldn't change that, but I wanted in part to try to do some things in his name and on his behalf and also see that, that we could carry his work further. The uh, legal clinic at the University of Florida is named for him now, not by their choice, but because then Senator Kerry Meek and I forced the university to have students that received the education he was denied do work in his name and on his behalf for the clients he couldn't represent. But I realized then, and of course with uh, Blaze being recognized today, that we're only here for a limited period of time, and we never know when that time is going to end. And next year, I will hit 40 years of being in the profession, but I wake up each morning realizing it may be that last day, and I wonder what I can do to make the profession a little bit better in the day that I have. Um, for attorneys, like myself that have gotten a good deal of gray uh, in their hair, uh, we won't be here forever. And yeah, we can take on some cases, but it's what we can do with the younger attorneys who uh, need our assistance in trying to do this work that can enable us to continue what we're doing forward. And that's actually one of the reasons I told Jenna not this year, let's wait, because I've been working on two programs that I'm hoping by next year we will say will be an established part of the Hillsborough County Bar Association. One is simply trying to pair up attorneys like myself with experience with younger attorneys who want to do pro bono work so that they can take on cases that they don't have the skills to do and work with us to learn a little more and be able to do some of the legwork that we perhaps don't have time for. And the other that I'm trying to work with the Tampa Bay Hispanic Bar Association is to get young attorneys who are bilingual to pair up with experienced attorneys like myself who are monolingual and uh, enable Spanish-speaking clients to get some of the services that, that I couldn't provide to them because I, I cannot communicate with them and my hope is that this gonna, is going to be an established part of what this bar association does and to that extent we can carry on both Mr. Hawkins dreams and my own goals a little bit further so I appreciate the recognition today I just want to remind you that the work is just beginning and I look forward to working with all of you in the future thank you All right, a uh, few people I want to thank. Uh, for, first of all, uh, a big thank you to Nancy Lugo, Jenna Hudson, and the entire Bay Area Volunteer Legal uh, uh, Legal Program staff. Uh, you guys are awesome. You uh, you work hard every day throughout the year to bring and promote pro bono service in, in our circuit. And thank you also for all the work you put in on uh, on tonight's ceremony. Two other individuals I want to thank for, um, for, for helping with the ceremony tonight. Um, Rosemary Armstrong, the immediate past chair of this committee. She's probably wondering what it's going to take for her to stop having to help with, uh, <laughs> with, with it would probably take you moving, which I hope you never do. But, uh, and, and also uh, Rachel Zisk, um, she's, uh, she's the chair of, of this event tonight. Rachel, your only mistake, you, you're, you do your job so well, you make it look so easy. Um, it seems like it just comes together, but I know you work many, many months uh, putting this together. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thanks also to our uh, all, all the award presenters. None of you announced for La La Land, um, so so we're, we're, we did better than the uh, than the Oscars this year. Thank you to my to my colleagues uh, for being here. To all of you in the audience, thank you so much for sacrificing your your evening. Uh, but most of all, uh, the the biggest thank you of all um, to uh, to Blaze Gamba and to all of the uh, lawyers who have been recognized, the award recipients who've been recognized here tonight, you are the heroes of our legal profession. Um, what you do is honorable, it is noble, it inspires us. Thank you so much. 
And um, now we're on to the best line uh, on, on the program, reception to follow. So please uh, stick around and, um, uh, and uh, celebrate with us a little bit more. Thank you.